I can do it. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of drawing this young lady here. My second attempt, as you know. Anyway, we're just going to continue on. I'm going to add a little bit of dark, uh, probably a lot of dark, uh, to her hair on the one side of the image so that I have some kind of a reference to tone rather than just plain white paper. I'll explain it as I go ahead. And then if there's still time, because you know these videos can get pretty lengthy and I have to speed them up, I really apologize. But I do narrate everything, as you know. So it's just not you watching me draw in super fast flash motion. Uh, you know, I explain what's going on. So there's a difference there. And if you haven't seen the other video, you know what I'm going to say. You should check it out before you check this one out. And I really appreciate you tuning in. And by the way, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and click the notification bell. And if you like the video, give it a like. It really helps the channel out. Helps me, motivates me to make more content. You guys know how that works. All right. Well, anyway, let's get to it. back at it again and uh, as you see it's right where we left off in the last video I, I haven't done anything since well, I shouldn't say I haven't done anything since I'm working all the time but I haven't done anything on the drawing anyway so I said I would explain what's up with the dark and here's the thing you see the tone on the face here okay now that's about as close as I can get to what I see here on the image but if you'll notice the image is backdropped by or is adjacent to other tones other than white I have white this here is not white this is definitely not white so what will happen is as soon as I put in some of this dark area right here for example on the left uh, it is going to then show a difference in tone on my drawing different than here because I can only do so much against white but as soon as I put in dark it's going to show that what I've done is likely too light believe it or not but we'll take a look at that when we get there all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in oh I'd say part way down here maybe I don't want to do the whole dark thing like I did the first attempt on this drawing but I'm going to do part way so that it at least can get my tone set correct. And then the rest of it I will be able to uh, adjust accordingly and a whole lot easier. Now, I know it's going to be asked because it's been asked before. But that is, okay, what should you use for the dark? Well, you use whatever your darkest pencils are. Uh, depending on you know if you're going all graphite or if you're going to go graphite charcoal or if you're going to go all charcoal uh, what I like to do because I'm going for the real deep contrast is that I'm going to go with carbon because between the carbon now people th this I get this all the time and, it, and it's kind of frustrating but people will go on here you know and comment hey graphite is carbon yeah, we're carbon. Everything's carbon. But that's not the point. This is actually called a carbon pencil. Carbon sketch. And this is definitely not graphite. Okay? So when I say carbon, I'm not referring to the base material of graphite and graphene and, you know, all these other things. You know, the... the, the molecular model or whatever I'm referring to what it's called it's called carbon right there okay this is a general's pencil number 595 and it is called a carbon pencil so you can buy carbon pencils and they're not graphite all right so now I've beaten that horse to death let me put a some kind of a point on here I don't need a point but I need a little more exposure from the wood
Now in this case I use the General's All Art pencil sharpener. So that means I don't have a very long point. And I like long points, but carbon and charcoal tend to be a little soft, so you got to be careful with long points. They snap real easy. So I'll just stick with the short point so I don't snap this carbon tip. I don't have that much left before I have to sharpen a new one. And uh, I'll just have to sharpen more often. But let's get right at it here. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I've got the distances correct. Uh, if I go from this part of the eye right here, and I'm going to use a proportional divider. I always get the same questions over and over and over again, so I'm, I'm going to have to mention it, all these pieces. So those who already know, sorry, but I, I'm trying to make everybody happy. You know how that goes. So anyway, what I want to do is I'm going to use this as a measuring device here. I'm not going to enlarge or anything with it. That's usually what it's for. But I'm just going to go right out here to uh, this part of the eye. And I want to go right to where I think it's getting starting to get really dark out. Just so I get an idea of how far out I'm going. Make sure I remember my starting point here on this photo. is just inside there. So we're looking about right there. I'm going to mark that. That gives me my reference. I didn't draw the line all the way up here, so I'm going to eyeball that, but uh, this is about the dark area right here. And I can see where my, you see this right here, my initial sketch line is how far out it will go, so I'm going to just bring that up, and there we go. And I'm going to get started here, make sure it doesn't get underneath my tape, but I just tried to. And look how dark that is. I mean, nothing, even the softest charcoal pencil, will not get as dark as this carbon pencil. So, if you ask me, what do I consider the darkest pencil? I would say the carbon pencil, and namely the one I use is General's Carbon Sketch. There are others. And just like charcoal, you do have to deal with a um, lot of dust, carbon dust here. And so you got to be careful you don't blow it all over your drawing. I do that a lot because I'm just a knucklehead, you know. I'm a knucklehead pencil artist. All right, so I got my basis here uh, for the darkest dark that can possibly be anywhere on this whole drawing and I'm going to use that now as my reference rather than white paper but before what I need to do is I need to get rid of all that dust so I know I've made this little error before and so I, I learn as I go because most of the things I learned is by making stupid mistakes. This is very low tack tape, by the way. It's not prone to tear the paper when you peel it, but you can always stick it on your clothing. I don't know if you can see that. You can stick it on your clothing and then peel it off and then it loses some of that tackiness. And I'm gonna just add this on here like so because I'm going to blow this dust off in this direction and I would rather it get on the tape rather than me having to clean this up later. Um, and remember what I mentioned in another video, blowing on, you know, blowing dust off of your drawing has its hazards. You might spit on your drawing. Try not to do that. One of the things I do is I kind of dry my mouth out real quick before I do it just to kind of minimize that possibility. There we go, and it worked. All right, so I got no dust on my drawing. I got my darkest area in here, and now I can go ahead and start shading out. One of the things that you want to do here is, if, if you'll notice, you don't go from a straight dark to a lighter tone 
and then you have this line that exists between the two because you go from a lighter to a darker but actually it's a gradient it goes from the darkest dark and then it gets a little lighter and a little lighter and a little lighter and a little lighter as it moves out so you want to duplicate that same thing to kind of give it that rounded face thing got to go rounded and uh, it also doesn't give you the abrupt demarcation here so you can use a q-tip for that you can use a, a pencil uh, what do you call it? a blender <clears throat> paper blender like this and uh, there's several different ways you can do this I'm going to use the paper blender and if it seems to be working out I'll stick with it if not I'll try something else there is no right and wrong it's whatever works so I'm going to go from the edge here and I'm going to kind of move it out like so now you'll notice that as I blend out from the darkest area that I'm lightening also the area that I got the material from which is right in the dark area so I may have to go back in there and add some more material okay I I still have that line there so I need some more gradient and don't worry as long as you don't press down or anything with your paper blender you'll be able to go in there and make any kind of touch-ups you want to a point or within reason I guess you'll never go back to white white though but you don't really want that in this area of the face okay so again I'm gonna go from the darkest dark and I'm gonna blend I'm taking advantage of some of that material for this really dark area here I'm, I'm shading that in and I can see right off the bat by doing that that the difference between here and right above it is much more drastic than what I see here so I know I'm gonna have to go much darker up here when before when it was white next to it uh, I was not able to easily tell that I would need to go that route okay so again I'm going to take a little here and blend it out it looks rough right now we will refine it momentarily but I just want to show you how you you want to make sure that you get rid of any kind of demarcation lines the material is coming out nice and smooth any blotchiness can be overcome by just little circular motions with my blender here it's just smooth it all out okay and in the moment I'll lighten up some of the areas like right here I'm going to lighten this whole area up here because I can see that I need contrast between here and here whereas right now it's uniformed okay. all right now I'm going to go back in with my charcoal pencil because I've lost some of that dark material that I need in here so you just go over it but as you come out into that darker area here's where you can take advantage of using a light hand so I'm going to come out I'm lightening my hand 
and I'm making a gradient. I'm going lighter and lighter until it just becomes the same as its neighbor there, neighboring tone. A lot of this is also going to be covered by the hair that's going out like this, so I'll be taking care of that as well. Okay, so, as you see, I'm kind of coming out and going lighter so that there is not this drastic change from dark to lighter. It's actually gradual. Okay, all right. So, I've done that for now. That's, that's rough, and uh, I'm going to refine that. Now, again, I mentioned you could use a Q-tip and I'm going to use a Q-tip here just to see if I can smooth that out without taking off too much material. I doubt it. I think I'm going to end up taking off more material. But that's not a big deal because I can add it back. All right, and I can see now, after having done this, that I need to go lighter in some areas. So let me take care of some of the blotchiness. And the rest of it I will take care of with my kneaded eraser. Smooth it. All right. Okay. Now... Now that I've done that, I'm going to look here and I can see now, compared to dark in this area, what I need to do here. I see that i got to go out a little darker because it's, see I'm going to get this aligned here a little bit. Looks like my, um, my drawing is a little more wider than my original because I actually did this printout. And the printout is a little bit bigger than this, but this is photo paper and I preferred uh, the tones to this rather than the tones with copy paper. I used uh, this as my uh, reference and so um, I got a little bit of tug of war going here. But I'm going to use my carbon, come out a little bit because these are the proper dimensions. This is the tone I'm going for. This is the dimensions I'm, I'm using, if that makes sense, okay? So I have to be careful not to get my dimensions off this. Keep that there for a moment. All right. All right, now, note what I'm going to do at this point here. First off, I'm going to get a clean Q-tip and use it as a lightener. And what I want to lighten is this area right here and this area right here. Okay, so I could see that I have a, a distance problem here. And if I compare it to here, this gets really dark all the way where this has got a lot of light. But uh, I need a little more darkness moving out. But let's, for right now, let's just get this lightness part in and we'll worry about the rest. So, we see about, oh, from this eye, it comes out to about right here. So you eyeball it. That's part of the art. Just eyeball it. And I'm going to move my Q-tip out here and see if I can pick up a good amount of this carbon 
and lighten up this area here. And it has limited success, but no problem. I'm going to do as much as I can with this. And you can see, compare the tones. See how much lighter it is to hear, and this is not as light to hear. See, having this dark in here now gives me better reference. Okay, so I can see that I'm going to be limited on using this Q-tip here. It took a little bit off, but it's not taking enough off. Now, the kneaded eraser. You know, the only way you can know your tools is to use them, test them, try them, and then the next time, you know, you'll just have it in your memory as to uh, what you need to do. So anyway, uh, get my kneaded eraser all ready. And in this case, because the area is very large, I don't want a point. Uh, I want kind of a rounded dome here. Uh, so that's what I'm going to make. It's going to make little round circles, so you're going to have to be like real detailed to flatten that out so it doesn't look spotty. But it takes off more material this way. So now, let's go in here and tap. And make the shape you're looking for. This is a rounded shape, right? So I'm going to make that shape. Okay. And you may have to go back a few times with your eraser and give it a clean tip. But notice how it's starting to take up that extra material. You're going to draw with your kneaded eraser is what you're doing here, okay? See that? Realism, baby. Realism. All right. I got more area up here than I have to this tape here. So I'm going to have to get right in there. Comes out over here. This whole area here. Okay, so that looks about right there. Alright, so I think I got the tone pretty good there. Right here, I'm probably going to want to get darker. So, see if I can do that. Okay, and I can see right off the bat, I'm going to have to get much darker over here. And I'm a little bit too light right here. So I can see things that I'm going to need to adjust now that I have done what I've done. First off is there's a little bit of darkness going out here. I'm using the carbon pencil still. It's the darkest pencil I have at the moment. I could use charcoal because this is all charcoal here. But I was already using this, and it's what I'm using for my tone here. Might as well go with it. It's a dark area. Okay, and then I notice that this whole area here needs to be darkened. So I'm laying down material that I can move around. So, don't worry about it if it doesn't look like it's like the image just yet. It'll get there. If you watch any of my drawing videos, you'll you'll see that in the beginning things don't add up. You know, you're like, ah, oh, that doesn't look like the original. 
And then next thing you know, by the time the video is over with, you're like, oh, I guess so. Yeah, that's, that's what you got to live with. <laughs> Going to use my pencil blender. My paper blender, because, you know, you got to diffuse things. You don't want it just harsh lines, right? And I'm going to have to try to see how much I can retain, because it will lighten a little bit. And it's a constant going over back and forth, you know. Okay, so I can see I need to go here. And this goes dark all the way into here. So, we need to bring this out. Even out. This is not the right pencil, is it? Let's see. Nope, that's the Primo. No wonder I was. Started noticing there was a little difference there. And how it feel. Where did my carbon go? There it is. All right. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go from the dark right here and then lighten it up from the dark, lighten it up, return that dark that just got moved. getting there. We're getting there. Let's put that away. See some of the material coming off by my doing that. Okay, this is a darker area here. I need to get that darker. So, this is darker here, this is lighter here, let me get that a little lighter for now. Need eraser. We're getting somewhere here. I'm not going to worry about the details just yet. Just want to get the tones right and the shapes of those tones. Okay, so that kind of comes up like this. Like that. Okay. I can see I have a little shape difference here, so I need to go up a little bit sharper here. Kind of up here. up like that and then this part goes down to 
like here. All right, we're getting closer to it. Okay, we're getting close to it right there. And you notice what a difference it makes getting the darkest areas in. Now it makes figuring out this shade and these tones uh, much easier. All right, so need to soften some areas here. This is removing too much material though. That's the only thing I'm not happy about is the blenders. Blenders, Q-tips, uh, chamois, is, which is as far as a blender will take off the most material. Um, this right here, for example, chamois. I use this as an eraser many times. And not a eraser where it erases everything, but it really lightens areas up. And uh, it's a blender. <clears throat> so... When you're blending things out, or when you're just wanting to blend things to get, <clears throat> excuse me, to get your gradient, um, you're going to often find yourself um, taking off more material than you like. You got to come back and put that material back in again. So that's something that uh, you know you just have to go back and forth with. So as I'm lightening up this area here and this area here, uh, and, and I'm coming over here because I need this to be a little more gradient, I'm taking off more material than I care for, so I got to put it back. Now another thing too uh, is I'm going to switch off from the carbon, which I really only want to use for the hair in this case, because this is as Black is black. You're not going to get any blacker than that. And I also like to use it for the pupil of the eyeball. So uh, oftentimes I'll use the carbon for that. Uh, in this case, I just went ahead and used the Primo Elite Soft Charcoal, which I'm going to move to right now because I need to get this area up here darkened and I need to get this just a little bit more refined. Um, because I'm not getting exactly what I want and I'm very picky about that. So, uh, and it's going to give me a little more control with this point and everything. So let's just go ahead. Right now I've got this distinct line here, which is not as distinct here, but we do have all this hair coming out here and I'm not going to add that in until I get the tone of the face in. Then I will put the hair on top. So until then, I can't hide things with all this hair, which is what you're going to be able to do when we get to that point. So right now I'm going to use this to come out of the darkest dark and give it these uh, shapes that um, you see right here. And I'm using a very light hand, which is what I normally would do. And I want to get this rounding thing going. Okay, kind of gauging the width here, but at the same time, it's really this width that I need right here. But I'm seeing from here to here, I could use a little more up here, and it kind of gets a little dark. This area here gets a little darker than right next to it. So with a very light hand, very light, I'm just going to blend with my pencil. Okay, so I'm blending with my pencil. Using a very light touch. I want that transition, really good transition, okay. I see this area right here, I want to bring that in there, okay, don't want to lose that, okay. This is darker than next to it. Here. 
kind of have this little horn shape. I want to get that in there. Okay. Just take your time. There's no hurry. Shouldn't be any hurry. If you got a customer or something, a client that's rushing you, you just tell them you want it done right or you just want it done fast because you go too fast and you're just going to lose on your quality, okay? Alright, so I need to diffuse this and I'm not going to diffuse it with a pencil so it's time to blend Go from the dark out into the lighter. Okay. I'm trying to go with the lightest of touch. You gotta go from dark to light, give it a rounded, because she's got a round, you know, like most of us, has this rounded part. That's where our eyebrows rest. And so for me to give that illusion, I have to go from this dark and then just gradually go up. And then when you you go too far, you just take your needed. And you just kind of make the adjustments you need. see how far this goes out here so it comes out here then it starts to lighten up a little bit or I should say starting to transition to dark just about here okay so I'm gonna slow down find my spots so this here should be a little more diffused it looks like Get rid of that part there. That doesn't really need to be in there. See that right there. Okay. We use this. Let's see. This here needs to go out to here. Okay.
think I made mine a little bit larger. Let's see here. Should be okay. This is this is a little shorter. Okay. So I think this is maybe way too big. Let me, let me look at the original here. Well, that's about right there. So just going to lighten this part here. Q-tip. Going to smooth it out and give it some direction here, so I can see what I'm supposed to be doing. All right. So I might have to actually get a little darker there. Let's see over here. Let's smooth that out a little bit. I'm liking that part a lot better. Okay. So that right there. Cut that little guy off. Okay, and it looks like I need to go a little bit more aggressive with the lighting here. Here, so let me just lighten that up just a little bit, just ever so little. And then I'll refine it. Just take more material off here. Okay. And if you want to see the you want to see what this little puppy does, this um Shannon. I can get more aggressive with that lightning part. I'm just going to uh, make a paper airplane with this thing. I'm give it a little point, fold it over. Yeah, I got something like that. And now here, see I can get even more aggressive. Watch this. Look at this. Boom. Look at that. See? So now you can see you got this really gradient comes out goes from dark to a little less dark and then right out into where the light is all because of my little chamois trick here it's not my trick but you get what i'm saying okay I can make any adjustments I want from that. Oh, looky that. Looky, looky. Okay. Then again, I'm going to kind of blur the lines here. Alright. And then here, Kind of got this this thing going here, kind of almost like eyelashes. So I want to get that in there. Right. And again, I need to dull that down. Q-tip.
All right. So let me just kind of look at this a little bit. Okay, so I can tell that um, I still have some more work to do with the tones here, but they're getting very, very close. It seems a little bit of darker needs to be about right in here. This needs to go up like in a more of a rounded there. Let's see, this needs to be mildly lighter here, which again I could use my little chamois if you want to see the chamois magic again. Woohoo! Look at that. Okay. zeroing in on this thing now boys and girls okay I'm not going to use a chamois there because I know I'll take off too much so now I got to get this line out which I just did with my q-tip look at that okay all right so we are definitely zeroing in on the right amount of tone for this Q-tip there so I can smooth it out a little bit. Well, I'm starting to like that. Okay, so looks like I'm going to need some more material. And the question is, do I want to go in with this dark? Uh, soft charcoal and I'm thinking what I could do is I can go much lighter than this we can try this we'll go with the extra hard although I'm not sure how that's going to play out but I need to really refine the gradient looks like I can do it much better because I have more control over subtle I want to do subtle changes now so let me uh, let's see if I can do that I'm going to come out from the darkest and then go out into the lightest area see like right here I want to kind of blur it all right, just blur it a little bit. See, because it doesn't lay that much down, especially holding it the way I do really light, which means I can just kind of subtly change the tone rather than drastically change it. And that is what I want to do at the moment. It's looking like that's working really good. Now this area here needs to be a little darker, but see, I have to be careful not to get too dark. Then it just doesn't look separated. Like, you see this area right here? It's like a V. A V that's going this way, right? You can see it here. You have this lighter tone here, darker tone here, and much lighter tone. So this area should not be as light as this area. You can see it's darker here than here. But it's lighter in here than it is next door. So I need to make that only very subtly different in tone. So I think something like that. You can tell that that's mildly lighter than up here. Okay, which I'll blend with my extra hard charcoal pencil. Give it a little more of that kind of a look to it. Look at that. That is so awesome. All right. And then I can see there's some dark shading tones here and here right underneath the eyebrows here I don't know if it translates to the camera but uh, I need to get those sh shapes in 
And then when it comes out into the light, just, just lighten that just a little bit. Now I'll have to come back when the face is finished, for example, and make subtle, subtle changes or touch-ups. But I just want just very, very minute differences in shade. Nothing drastic. So you're probably going, I don't see a whole lot of change. Well, that's the whole point. I don't want a whole lot of change. I want, I want subtle change. I'm going for some shape. Okay. I think I like that for now. All right. Yeah, I think I like that for now. That looks pretty good. I know I'm going to have to make some more changes. This is going to have to get darker in here. I know that. It's going to have to get darker. Um, there's too much distance between here and here. So, obviously that's going to have to be adjusted, but we'll just, just add a little bit there. But not too much. Right. And again, blend. I'm going to get rid of that hard edge. These hard edges can really mess you up. So, in this case here, you can see that I'm diffusing the hard edge. Okay, and this is all going to be that hair coming out there. All right. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for now. I'm pretty sure this is all going to have to come become a little bit darker here. But only so slightly. There's a slight difference between here and here. just do it for now I think I can keep playing with this for a long time and I know you guys are going oh ah! right that's what I'm talking it's just keep you keep you engaged because I didn't do any time lapse on this at all all right but I am liking this you go from the dark out to the light, you do it gradually, so see I'm kind of diffusing it as it comes out of the ditch there, you might say. <laughs> and uh, so it has a more rounded, whoosh, you know, that kind of thing. I can see that this is too dark, I'm gonna, I mean too light, I'm going to darken it just a little bit. And, but anyway. I like to get this part as close as possible before I move on. Well, there you go. All right. And to move on with things, now that I got the darkest dark, I'm going to get into this lighter area. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go with a uh, graphite here and see how that plays out. I know, though, that with the graphite, I got to be real careful because when I want to get in with these dark spots, and I use charcoal for that. Um, you don't want it to slide off the graphite. And also you don't want to press down with the graphite because you get shine. And I, I never like that. So to do that, um, what I might use here, I have this 10B graphite pencil that I used for the Desert Man drawing. And it made really dark dark, but it was graphite. So that was kind of cool. So let's just see here as I, I lay this down. If it's too dark as a graphite, I might have to go with something lighter. And 
And I'm going in this direction because that's kind of what I see here. So I'm kind of going with the, the direction of the skin. There are different ways you can do this. You can do the little round oval things. I do that at times. Now like right here, when it goes over, I might go like this. Okay. And then down. And then give it that kind of illusion of making that cheek. It's not really a cheek way up here, is it? I'm not sure. But this graphite is really, really cool because it comes in dark, but it's not charcoal. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm kind of going with the contours of her bone structure. And you might think, well, no one's going to see that. Well, you're, you might be right. But then, you know, I'm always thinking that the subconscious mind probably can see it. I don't know theoretically but I do know that when I do this it helps me to shade correctly so that's that's why I tend to do that okay so I'm, I'm, I'm just gliding I'm letting the weight of the pencil do everything okay I am not adding any pressure whatsoever and, and another thing too is it makes it so easy for me to control direction of this pencil okay so that I can just keep keep going here I see there's a tone difference and so mild you see the tone difference between here and right underneath the eye see how much lighter it is right here this area that's this area right here. I want to keep that lighter than the area that's just below it. Right now it's a little more drastic, but I haven't blended this yet. Right now I'm only laying down material ever so gently. Okay. And then I will go in and I will blend. Yeah. That's an idea. <laughs> All right, and you can also come in here and gauge. Well, how far down is that thing going? Right, right there to there. So I'm, it's about right there somewhere. See, so I can actually lighten this area up here, which I'll worry about that when I'm blending. You come up here like so, and then you cup it. All right. So I'll blend it in a minute. It's just what I've done so far. So you, we all can get a little idea of what is going on here, right? All right. This is actually relaxing too. I don't know if you know that, but this is very relaxing for me. I mean, having a camera pointing down while I'm working and I'm having to talk when I'm doing this, because usually I want to listen to music, you know, but. I'm foregoing that because, you know, I want to share this with you guys and I don't want to have music, you know, distracting my talking here. All right, so let's just stop for right now. And what we're going to do is just grab yourself a Q-tip and let's see what we can do with this graphite. Now don't press in the paper people. Don't press. You want to glide that Q-tip. If you press, you push it right in that paper, you're not going to have the flexibility that you want, okay, to control it. Be careful when you come over to the carbon part here. You don't want to be picking that up because it will leave you these dark streaks. So just get as close as you can and move away from it. All right.
Now, something interesting that uh, you should be noting, and that is, you know, her face has all these things going on, right? Which are pretty cool characteristics. And so you don't have just this one tone, you have this, all these things going on. So when I'm doing this, and I'm thinking about that, okay, I lay down this pencil and I get these different different shades going on here that's what I want because it gives that face that character okay now I can see I gotta do a lot of touch up no biggie and it's not even dark enough so well, I go get take your kneaded eraser again your best friend and I need to start shaping so I'm going to come down what does it come down to here you want to get rid of any kind of spottiness you don't want blotchiness right you don't want certain kind of blotchy so if you laid it down lightly like I mentioned okay Oh, you know, it's becoming a regular thing hearing emergency vehicles while I'm making videos. You always wonder, okay, is this another, you know, virus issue thing or what, you know. All right, so... Now, I don't live in the big city and not accustomed to listening to emergency vehicles. Boy, the times we live in. I've been living for a pretty decent amount of time, 62 years, and uh, I can tell you people, I've the world that I'm seeing now, uh, I mean, things were bad at times before, but Gosh, you know, now everybody wants to flip everything upside down. Uh, what was once bad is now good. What was once good is now bad. You know, men are women, women are men. It's confusing. It used to be easier. Anywho, all right, so as you can see that I've kind of made that um, U, you might say, not U, but the letter U. <laughs> yes, U. U can prevent forest fires. All right, there's no freckles on this face yet, so we still have a ways to go here. I'm still trying to get tone down correct and uh, now I got some blotchiness I want to get rid of so this will be easy just find the the high spots or the darky streak spots and just lightly tap it you don't want perfection because there's no perfection in the face so you like some of that imperfection to remain but get the ones that kind of detract you know a little bit all right okay so I can see that I have mm, yeah, so close but I'm going to say this is a little lighter than here yeah it is a little lighter so I'll end up going a little darker there but right now it's just a matter of just getting that all you know get some material going in there but that's starting to look pretty good okay yep 
starting to look pretty good. I'm going to go in there with my hard, extra hard charcoal and I'm going to put in some of these little details and then of course they'll lighten up and I'll have to put them back again. But just just gives me some area. So right now i got a little freckle here for example. Let's get that in there. So you come down straight from the center of the pupil. That's where it is. See, straight down from the center. About that far. So I'm going to go about right there I would say right there and then I'm just going to I'm not pressing hard but I'm there's a couple of really dark and then it's not as dark there so what I'll do is I'll just get the dark part in first and yes, I'll have to spend this much time on a freckle. One freckle is going to take me a little bit of time here, okay? So that shows you how much patience you need. If you get super good at it, you can do it faster. More power to you, but me, my eyesight and everything the way it is. Alright, so there's the dark parts, and now I'm going to go like this to get the not as dark part to finish that. Okay. All right. I think I got that down straight down. Yep. Okay, take my blender, just going to blend it a little bit, and then I could already see by putting that in there, I could already see that I need to go darker in the background. So uh, that is something I'm going to do next time. You have all these little lines here, okay, and I'm going to use the charcoal, uh, the graphite pencil for that so I'm not going to monkey with that too much. Uh, here's a dark spot right here. I might want, want to go ahead and put that in so that comes straight down from there to about right there and that's kind of a shadowy looking thing so let me put that in there. And a lot of these I'm going to have to come back and do it again but I want to start getting some some of it started and then there's like this little thing that comes off of there like so this extra hard extra hard charcoal pencil is really good for this kind of stuff really like it all right so, and even that shows, shows me that I'm going to have to get darker in tone. So you can see that when you put darker things in, it tells you that your, whether your tone is too light or too dark in the surrounding areas. And look at, by looking at this, I could tell that I need to go darker with that. Okay. So, let's see. I'm going to use my uh, 10B graphite again. Let's see what I can do with this. This time I'm going to use more of a just a circular because I want to I want to put down a little bit of darker tone but not too much and fill in the area. See and by doing that I can see that already my little birthmark thingy here or whatever needs to be darker. So I'm adjusting accordingly. This drawing is going to be a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of time. So stay tuned for all those videos. Okay. Again. Yep. 
Yeah, so that's what I want right there. That's the tone I want right underneath there. And so I need to get that going all the way. Just ever so lightly shading it all in. My drawing is definitely lighter than the original, so I'm definitely going to have to make some tone adjustments here. See that there needs to be a little darker too, but not much, just a little bit. Take some of those highlights out, shouldn't have any highlights there. Tip time, smooth, 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 smooth. And take the charcoal pencil and just get that back in a little bit. So, see it's such a subtle, like I can see, oh, okay, now I need to be, you know, a little lighter, a little darker, a little darker, a little lighter, you know, adjustments back and forth. Smooth some things out, darken some areas. See this area here is all going to have to get a little bit darker too, you know, so... I come in here, I can see this area here, so maybe I'll just lay down some of this charcoal here, like so. You know. Some areas here. looking things going on here so why don't we just go ahead and put some of those in without making it too obvious then I got to go in there with an eraser and make some white speckles yep so there's a lot of this stuff going on here this area here could use a little bit of darkness there could use a little bit of it I'm going to have to sharpen this pencil, but there's one right there. Okay, we have this here. Okay, and this whole area here needs to be darkened. I'll use my charcoal for that as well. And then I'm going to take out those white dots. When I mean take out, I mean I'm going to put them in with an eraser. This hair's got to be darker. I got a line here that I need to get rid of. So, I got a lot to do here. Let's see. Smooth, 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 smooth. OK, 
Okay, so what I was talking about a minute ago was you got some little white areas that you need to get out. Here's my Mono Zero. I could I could use that perhaps to you know add a little bit of that character in there like so. Okay. You don't want them white, white, you just want them lighter. There's just so many little details on this face. Just so many little things that uh, you're not going to get them all, but you can simulate that you did, you know, give it that appearance, right? This part is a thin line. I got it as a thick line, so I'll even use this eraser to thin it out a little bit as I'm, you know, trying to make a case here for this and see right here this should go all the way up like that and lighten all that so I'm going to lighten it like right now and see what happens I like to experiment when I'm drawing too you know try different things because then I I find little things I go hey I could do this next my next drawing or whatever so you know each drawing Builds on the last. Look at that. Isn't that cool? You starting to see the um, working that realism in there. Okay. Yeah. I can use my kneaded eraser too. Yeah. But it's a lot of back and forth, you know, just Look at that. Isn't that cool? Okay, so if, if my line is in the wrong place or the wrong shape or whatever, you know, and when I'm saying line, I'm saying like this dark spot right there. I come in here and adjust it, readjust it until I get it where when I go, when my eye flicks back and forth, I don't see a drastic change or difference. I'm actually going for where I don't see any change. But you don't always get what you ask for, right? You don't always get what you want. But you get what you need, yeah. Uh, some of you guys out there, as old as I am, might actually know where that bit of lyrics came from. Okay. So yeah, I'm I'm liking that, and I still got more I still got more tone, darkness, lightness to do. But you know what? I've spent like three thousand hours on this particular video right now. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stop now, and we're going to pick up at the next video. Okay. So make sure you're subscribed, folks, and uh, get that notification bell clicked. And hey, you know, share uh, share my channel with others on social media and stuff. Kind of kind of help me get to that fifty thousand halfway mark to the hundred. Boy, as long as I've been doing this, I sure would love to someday see that that hundred thousand. That that would be cool getting me one of them little YouTube plaques, right? So help me out, please. And uh, I'll reward you back with some content, you know, on how I make my, my own drawings, all right? So anyway, that's it for now. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.